In this video, I look at motivated light and I show you two ways to include the light source in your photographs. Adorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Howie, and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. In this video, we're going to have a look at motivated light sources. Now, what's a motivated light source? Well, it's where you actually have the light source, or the perceived light source, in the shot itself. Now, normally when we're shooting in a studio environment, I want to keep the, the lights away from my shot and, and out of sight. But in this case, we're going to have two light sources in the shot. Now one of them I'm going to light in camera, and we'll, we'll set that up in a moment, but the other one I'm going to do inside of Photoshop, so you can get two different ways of creating a similar effect. Okay, so that's the idea. All we need to do is get our model and start shooting. So once again, I'm working with Kerry as our model. Do you want to say hello? Hello. And let's talk about the motivated light source. Now for this shoot, I'm going to have two motivated light sources. I'm going to have this thing right here, which is a little lantern that we found in the garden and it looks perfect for the job. And I've got a crystal ball. So to light the lantern, I'm going to use this, which is a flashpoint speed light. On the top, I've just got a little diffusing cover as well. And I'm going to pop this inside of the lantern like that. And we'll get it as far in as I can and close the door. And that's going to give the impression of light. So let's take a test shot and see how this comes out. Now that's with the flash at full power. And at full power, it actually lights Kerry fairly well. But I'm losing a little bit of control. I'm not really too happy with the direction of the light. And I'm burning out some of the lantern as well. So rather than using the actual speed light to light Kerry for real, we're going to add our own light in and just simulate the light coming out of here. So to do that, I can turn the power of that speed light down a couple of stops. And I can do that here on the remote. Let's try that. There we go. So now that's really dark, but you can still see that the lantern is lit. And now we can take control and add in a couple of extra lights to create our own lighting effect. So the actual light that's going to really light Kerry is going to be this guy right here. So this is my Streak Light 360. It's a lovely, powerful light, and I've got it on a small beauty dish with a grid and that will help to give me direction and shape to the light and not contaminate the background because we'll use a third light to light the background. Okay, so let's get this into position. Now it needs to come into position so it actually looks like the light from this light is coming from the lantern. So I can't put it up too high because the lantern is down low and I've got to have it in roughly the same direction as the lantern as well. So popping it about there should be fine. Now I'm going to take a meter reading and work out the exact exposure. So I've got my flash meter. Let's just come round to the side. I'll pop this underneath Kerry's chin, pointing back at the flash. So that's giving me a reading of f5.6. Now I'd actually like a little bit more depth of field than that, so I'm going to increase that flash by one stop, which once again I can do on the remote. That should give me f8, but we'll just double check. Yep, and we're back to f8, so that is my target aperture, that's what I want to dial into the camera, and that's going to be the exposure we take. So, let's take a shot and see how that looks. So as you can see, the lantern is still lit, and the beauty dish is adding a little bit of light onto Kerry's face and a little bit onto the table, but there's quite a deep shadow on the other side of her face. So let's use a reflector and we'll just bounce a little bit of light in to the other side. And I'm going to put it a little distance away so it's not actually in the shot. And for that reason, I'm using the silver side to try and bounce as much light in as I can. Okay, let's try that. So there you go, that adds a little bit of light just to the side of Kerry's face. Not too much, but still gives that moody feel. So I've got three lights effectively, one in the uh, lantern, one as a beauty dish, and a reflector. That really adds a third light effect. Let's add one more light, because so far the background is unlit. And that's on purpose, because I want to add my own light back there and create my own effect. So I'm going to put a light, and it's just going to go behind into the background. 
And this light, I'm going to make sure that it's not pointing at Kerry because we don't want to light the back of her. We actually want to light this background because it's all nice and sparkly and really fits in with the scene. So let's turn that on and we'll just take a test shot. At the moment, it's set fairly low in power. I think that's probably going to be OK. This isn't really what I want to meter. It's more I want to look at the end result and then decide whether this is too bright or too dark based on the visual results. So let's take a test shot. OK, here we go. So there we are. That gives us a lighting effect that is made up of several lights, but looks like it's really just coming from this lantern. Now, in Photoshop, I'll show you how we can actually add some glow from the crystal ball as well, but that's for a little way down the line. For now, what I need to do is actually do the shoot and create some great pictures. So, Kerry, are you ready? Yes. Okay, let's do the shoot. Here we go. Now you can just sort of see if you can just yep. hold it. A little bit further apart, I think a little bit more kind of Brilliant, so there we go. That was a really good shoot. We got some fantastic shots with our little lighting set up here, but of course they still need a little bit of work in Photoshop, so let's get my favorite picture and we'll go into Photoshop right now. Well, it goes without saying that if you can get it right in camera, that's the best place to do it. Minimize the amount of Photoshop, save yourself some time. However, lighting something like the crystal ball is kind of challenging. And I had a go at that in the previous video where we had a lovely smoky background and it can be done. However, you can also do it in Photoshop. And in Photoshop, I can actually get a fairly great looking glowing crystal ball. So let's see how it's done. So this is the picture. I've done a little bit of preparation here. And if I want to add in the glow to the crystal ball, there are several ways I could do this. One of the quickest and simplest is simply to get the, well, the good old paintbrush. Make sure you have white as your foreground color. And well, there you go. You now have a glowing crystal ball. It, it works really well, but it is quite a fantasy looking glow. And if that's what you want, brilliant, stop there. But I wanted something that looked a little bit more photographic. So let's undo that. And I'm gonna do my crystal ball glow inside of RAW. So I'll take this picture back into RAW. Of course, it could have started in RAW. You don't have to come into Photoshop first at all. So how am I gonna do it? Well, I'm gonna use one of the local adjustment tools. This one right here, the adjustment brush. Now the adjustment brush, as the name suggests, is a paintbrush that allows you to paint adjustments straight onto the shot. Now it could be all sorts of different things. It could be exposure, contrast, clarity, anything you like. I'm just going to use exposure for this particular part. So let's, let's put it up to maximum. Yeah, let's go mad and we'll paint uh, a similar sort of effect with a big brush slap in the middle. However, this isn't the same as painting white with a paintbrush in Photoshop because I'm painting exposure and it adds a, an extra layer of realism, I think. But that's just a little bit too strong. I want to build this up in layers and just slowly add a little bit more glow and a little bit more glow. So rather than doing it all in one go, let's just bring the exposure down possibly to about two stops ish, something like that. And then we'll zoom in a little bit closer and see how we're doing. Not that close, there we go. So I've got this lovely kind of bubble structure inside of this crystal ball and I don't want to lose all of that. I want to keep some of that in my shot. So to do that, I'm going to get the adjustment brush again. And this time, well, let's leave it on the same settings, but we'll make sure that up here it says new, which it does. And then I can click and add a new pin or a new brush right there. Now, I don't want to go quite as big as that as well. I'm going to make it smaller. So let's make my brush size smaller. I'm using the left square bracket just to shrink that down a little bit. 
And we can just shrink that in a little bit like that because I want my glow really to happen just in the middle of the crystal ball. Okay, so you can see we're still keeping a little bit of the outside realism, but we're just adding that glow that's coming from the very heart of the crystal ball. So that works really well. I'm happy with that, but you've got to start thinking about realism. Now, would the crystal ball glow go on the other side of the fingers where Kerry's holding it? I'm not sure that it would as much as it appears to be at the moment. So let's see if we can just reduce that a little bit. So to reduce the glow, I will choose the erase option here for the adjustment brush and just come down here. Let's have a little look. I've got my flow. Let's set that to about half and the feathering to about 50 as well. And I've got a nice little small brush. I can just paint on here. Now, the erase option works on each pin individually. So this is the small glow that I added to the middle. If I click on the other one, you can see I get a preview that it's the big glow. It's probably this one that I need to erase most. I'm gonna leave the glow on the fingertips because that's kind of what happens. It, it would literally glow through the fingertips. And I reckon that's pretty good just like that. So that's fine. I've got one more area I want to work on and that's just on the side of Kerry's face here because if this really was glowing, then we'd have some more light just hitting her cheek. So let's go back to the top here. Let's add a new brush. And we'll, again, we'll leave it on two stops. I suspect it'll be a bit bright, but we can just paint in a nice big brush. Yeah, way too bright. And then just drag that down a little bit, probably down to about one stop extra light just on her cheek. So that should complete my glowing crystal ball, but I can have a quick look at before and after. Yep, there it is. So there you go. There is my crystal ball fortune teller picture completed. So there you go. That's how we created the final picture with our motivated light sources. Now let's have a little look inside of the crystal ball and predict the future because if you want to see some more videos from myself and the other amazing presenters here on Adorama TV, then you need to be clicking on the subscribe button. I'm Gavin Hoey. Thanks for watching. great looking prints at low cost, be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.